every controller video, we talk about sensitivities and settings. And for a good reason. You know, playing on the best settings can be a game changer for Fortnite controller players. Fortnite happens to be one of the only games where your settings and sensitivities aren't always solely based on your preference. You know, a majority of the settings in Fortnite are actually necessary for becoming a pro player. And without those settings, it could be so much harder. In this video today, we're gonna to be going over the best settings, all right, sensitivity and dead zones to allow you guys to play at peak performance. What's going on, guys? It's the Motivation Guy. That's right, the one and only Keith Allen. You know, I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what's coming against you. I can just sense that a lot of you guys are going through discouragement. And so I just wanna encourage you to keep going. Nothing can stop you, nothing can get in your way. Trust me, everything that you go through is gonna make you stronger. I know from experience, all the things that I've been through, it's made me the man that I am today. And now I'm here to inspire you guys to keep going. I'm rooting for you. This is gonna be the best year yet. Don't stop. Follow me right now on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you. All right, guys. So before we dive in, do not forget to use code PROGUIDES and the item shop to support us. Also, if you guys are interested in getting better at Fortnite, that should be everybody, then you want to click the link below to go to ProGuides.com where you can play with the best players in the entire world. Sign up for our membership at ProGuides and you're going to get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like Benji and Mongrel. So if you guys want to compete in Fortnite, you have to check out ProGuides.com and be sure to drop a like on this video to show your support. We strive to bring you the best content available. So without further ado, I want you to sit back, relax, and get my favorite candy. What is it? Come on, say it with me. That bunch of crunch and let's do it. First, let's start with the all-around game settings, okay? These settings are very important for helping you do normal things such as sprinting, picking up items, building, and doing more specific things such as, you know, opening doors and chests. Going down the list, the first important setting we see is toggle spring. You should have this setting switched on off and that's because of the setting that comes directly after it, sprint by default. Keeping sprint by default on will keep your plane running as fast as it can whenever you're moving around. It'll also free up a button on your controller, which we're going to be using later into this video. Also, make sure to have Sprint Council's reloading set to off because you don't want to cancel your reload by accident since you're going to be having Sprint by default on. Next up, we have Tap to Search and Interact On. This will make it a lot easier to open up chests, ammo boxes, and pull off revives as you won't have to hold the button down anymore. Hold to Swap and Reload is also a nice feature to have, but it's going to take some time to get used to. It's very useful for controller players as you're going to be able to sort items specifically where you want to without having to reorganize your inventory. Toggle targeting is another thing that is more important for controller players, and we always suggest having it off. Aiming in with the left trigger is much more natural as your ADS will lock and unlock as you move your trigger. Having this off means that you're gonna have to click your trigger in every time you want it to ADS and come out of ADS. The next setting, reset building choice, isn't as important as the rest because we're not going to be using a building layout that's gonna require it. So it's up to you to have it on or off. Moving on, we have turbo building, which should always be set to on. If this is off, guys, you're going to have to individually place every build instead of just being able to hold down a button and just have them place automatically. Controller auto run is also a preference setting. You know, a lot of times you're going to find yourself running long distances, but it's best not to use auto run, especially if you're playing a competitive game type, since you want to be able to react fast and have full control over your player. If you're a casual player, it could be the right setting for you. Auto open doors is actually a really useful setting that many people tend to just overlook. You know, a lot of times when you're in a build fight or just pulling off some sweet edits, you might find yourself accidentally making a door edit instead of another intended edit. You know what I mean, right? What auto open doors will do is it will automatically and instantly open the door, allowing you to continue with your building, which can be great to save in build fights situations. It'll also give you an advantage when flying through doors with gliders in the early game. Confirm edit on release is the next setting down the list, and it's one of the more controversial ones after the Chapter 2 update. You know, we highly suggest, guys, having this setting off for a number of reasons. First of all, having edit on release doesn't change the fact that it's a three-step function. You're going to be performing three things in order to complete the edit, regardless of whether or not you have this setting off. Let's say that you have it on, right? You're going to be going into edit mode, selecting your edit, and then releasing the edit button. Whereas if you're not on confirm edit on release, you're going to be going into edit mode, selecting the edit, and then clicking the confirm button. What's great about manually clicking confirm is that you can do it at the same time you've selected your edit, giving you more control. Having confirm edit on release also doesn't allow you to do two-step edits, such as making two windows or making a door and a window. Overall, you know, keeping it the old way of editing is not only better, but you're even more used to it. 
Auto pickup weapons is another setting that is preference, but we suggest having it off as it could cause you to pick up unwanted weapons at times, which is going to waste time and leave a large window for you to get attacked as you're going to be spending more time rearranging your weapon slots. You know, auto store consumables to write also depends on your preference as it's based on where you normally keep your consumables. For the final control option, we have Builder Pro. Build immediately, which should always be set to on as it'll allow building with zero delay. Moving down, we have controller vibrations, which should always be set to off. Okay, vibrations can be so distracting, oh my goodness, and can also cause your aim to become really shaky. Also, having replays off can improve your FPS if you're on PC, but at the end of the day, it's up to you guys, depending on how much you use your replays. For our controller PC players, what's up guys? We also wanted to give you guys some good video settings, as these can also improve performance greatly. The best settings used by pros like Ninja, Tifu, and even more are having every quality base setting on low or off, and then having your view distance all the way on epic. This is a great way to get more frames out of your game, and it's going to limit distracting variables that will come when playing on higher graphics such as shadows. Moving on to sensitivity, we're going to be using a brand new advanced sensitivity which is gaining traction and is proving to be one of the best. To start off, okay, so you're going to want to set use advanced options to on. Now, set your build mode multiplier to 2.2 and your edit mode sensitivity multiplier to 2.5. Being able to build fast on this new sensitivity is very important, man. This may feel pretty fast at first, trust me, but once you get used to it, you're going to be building as close to as fast as keyboard and mouse players. Editing is also easier to perform on higher sensitivity, so we set this to 2.5 to allow you to edit as fast as possible without it being uncontrollable. Now, moving on to advanced look sensitivity, we have our look horizontal and vertical speed set to 50%. For both horizontal and vertical boost, we have it set to 0% as boost can be really hard to control and unnecessary since the building and editing multiplier overcompensates for it. And because we have boost off, we will have boost ramp time on 0 seconds and instant boost when building on off. For advanced aim down side sensitivity, we will have a horizontal and vertical speed on 15%, while having both vertical and horizontal boost on 0%. And of course, ADS turning boost ramp time on 0 seconds. For advanced sensitivity, we're going to have look dampening time on 0 seconds in order to have no delay when building. Now, we're going to get into the look input curve. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a brand new style of aiming that came with the Chapter 2 update. At first, you know, it seemed like a really useless aiming mechanic that wasn't good for a controller. But after a while, a lot of pros and others have started to see the benefit of this input curve. The way exponential works is by starting off slow, okay, and then increasing your turning speed as you move your analog stick, which is why it's called exponential. Great name. Linear, on the other hand, makes you turn at the exact sensitivity that you set off the smallest movements to your analog stick, making it seem much faster and very reactive. The reason pro controller players have started using this is because it's more consistent and it can make your aim feel a lot more reactive, making you faster. However, it does take time to get used to and it's not going to make a significant improvement in your aiming like right off the bat. So before you try linear, my friends, let me tell you right now, it's going to take time to get used to it, but you can do it. We suggest trying it out for a week. And if you're not aiming better by the end of it, just go ahead and switch back to exponential. OK, exponential is a lot easier to control and get used to, meaning that, you know, if you started to get used to linear, you should have little to no problem getting your muscle memory back to exponential aiming. Aim assist strength should always be set to 100% to ensure maximum accuracy and legacy control should be set to off. Now that we've gone over the best advanced sensitivity, let's get into dead zones and controller binds. Starting with controller binds, you're going to want to set your controller to Builder Pro and then select Custom. Now leave everything as it is and switch your left D-pad button to Sprint slash Auto Sprint. Your left analog stick click in should be a free keybind once you've made that change. Now, change your left analog stick click to edit. This is going to allow you guys to edit without taking your thumb off your right analog stick, which is pretty more efficient, you know, than just having to click an edit button with your thumb or even your pointer finger if you play claw. Moving on to dead zones, my friends, we're going to take a little bit more time with these. Dead zones are not as straightforward as controller sensitivities and need much more thought and manipulation to perfect. The thing with dead zones is that they're different for everyone, as they should be. You know, dead zones are based on your controller and how much it's been used. To give you guys an idea of what they are and what they do, dead zones essentially control the radius at which your analog sticks will respond to movement. If your dead zones are high, your analog stick won't cause your player to move or turn until you move it past a certain point. If they're low, on the other hand, even the slightest movements to your sticks is going to cause movement and turning. This is why dead zones are so important, man. If your controller has been overused and analog 
analog sticks have drift, dead zones are a necessity. Drift is when your analog stick has been overworked to the point where it may slightly tilt to one side, causing unwanted movements in a game. You know, by raising your dead zones, you can eliminate this movement as the game will no longer respond to these unwanted movements. Now, in order to optimize your dead zones, you're going to want to set it as low as possible without getting any movement while your controller is laying still with no manipulation of the analogs. To test your dead zones and find the perfect dead zone, move your analog sticks all the way to the edge and then set your controller down on a surface and take both hands off. If you see your Fortnite character turning or walking on his own, raise your dead zones by 0.01 and repeat this process until you have no more movement. A good starting point for trying out dead zones, guys, is 0.14 on your left analog stick, okay, and 0.10 on your right. However, you know, we suggest setting both to 0.05 and starting to test the reactivity from there, okay? All right, guys, once again, it's the motivation guy. That's right, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you, posting up vids to inspire you guys to just do the impossible. And, uh, you know, we really hope you enjoyed this. Do not forget to use code ProGuys when you make any sort of purchases. You know, it just really helped us out, and we really do appreciate it. Comment down below what you thought about this video and what you like to see next. We aim to bring you guys daily quality content. So do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and, you know, show ProGuys.com some love for bringing you this one, man. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.